Hey guys, this is a rapid fire setup process for React.js. Now, if you wanna take a little bit more time and you need some more context, check out the blog that's at this link right here. Now for the rest of us, I'm just gonna kind of just breeze through this because there's not a whole lot of unique things about creating a React app that have to happen. Number one, you wanna make sure that you have Node.js installed and I recommend using the LTS version. You click on that link, you'll see all this, right? Click it, install it, do that now if you don't already have it. Now to test if you have it, just open up your terminal window or your PowerShell, depending on what system you're on, and just type out npm and also npx. If you see that those two things don't give an error, but rather give this sort of stuff, you're good. Node.js is installed, it's ready to go. The next thing is, of course, is picking an actual location where you plan on storing your project. This is probably gonna be in your development folder, assuming that you have one. If you don't, go ahead and make one. Uh, mine is in the dev folder, so right here. So if I cd into dev and pwd, or just kind of list out where I am, that's this right here, right? So now what I can do is npx create-react app. That is the command to actually create a React application. Not really that complicated. And absolutely, like any JavaScript project, you can actually do all this stuff by hand. You don't have to run this command. Um, and it's actually not npm, but rather npx create React app and then the name of the act that you're gonna call it. In my case, I'm gonna call it try react.js and I hit enter and it's gonna do all of this installation stuff. It's gonna take a couple minutes. Notice that it has three packages that are required. So if you were to do it by hand, you would wanna install those three packages. Not really sure why you would do it by hand other than to practice maybe. Um, and that might be an interesting challenge for you to do. After you do this, see if you can actually figure out how to do this by hand. Maybe, maybe not, um, it's not a huge deal. Okay, so the next thing is we're gonna actually check out that package. But while it's still installing, I'm actually going to install the standard library so we can add the React.js, some extra functionality that we want inside of Sublime Text. So for those of you who don't use Sublime Text, you can probably still benefit from the standard JS library. It does something called linting. So linting will clean up our text or our code for our JavaScript quite a bit. And, and we'll see what that does in, once we actually get into working through a JavaScript project. But from here on out, I'm always gonna have this linter going for React code. Um, so let's go ahead and open up our another terminal window. And I'm gonna go ahead and run npm install global standard. So this is the standard JS library. Uh, you can see it right here. It's a style guide and formatter. It fixes some code for us. It's pretty cool. It's nice that that, that even exists. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up Sublime Text. So in Sublime Text, we're gonna just, let's open a new window here. And I'm gonna do Command Shift P. And then we're gonna type out install and we wanna install a package. All right, so the package that we want to install is the sublime linter contrib standard. And there it is. So that installed it, right? And then it says you must activate all of the things. We are doing all the things right now. So standard JS is one of those things that we just, that either we just installed or it's still installing. Ah, oh, we've got a permissions error. So if that happens, sudo npm install g standard, type out your super user's password and let that run for a minute. Next thing is we wanna get the standard format from package control. Uh, looks like standard JS itself installed globally. That's great, that's what we want. That's what that little dash g does if you're not familiar with npm. Let's go back into Sublime Text and install another package. Again, standard format. There we go. So now we have two packages installed inside of standard JS. Now, why did I do this? Well, the reason being is if we CD into our try react JS project, I can obviously run npm run start, or maybe not, maybe not so obviously, but npm run start will open up my development server and I should see a react app actually running and working. Cool, so that looks good. 
Um, so that's pretty much React. React is now set up, right? There's a few other things that we might want to install. Uh, and there's some commands here that can show you just generally how to, how to make things happen, um, which we'll go over in just a moment. But you might want to install, let's say for instance, we install uh, the what you get fetch. Um, so fetch is a way to do HTTP methods. And this is a way to install it right on your local package or your local system uh, for this app, right? So if I list things out, package.json is where all of my dependencies for this project are. And if I open this up inside of Sublime Text, I'll see that entire package, right? So this is the actual development package. So we have a few scripts in here that I can run. One of them is build. So npm run build, this will create a production version of your code. Even though we don't really have much code, that will do that. So since we have this package open, we might as well add this project to um, Sublime Text. So we open this up and let's go ahead and view the sidebar. So we see our, our actual project here, we have our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this project as and we'll call it try react js there we go and we can go into our source code so app.js so, so this is where that standard library and that linter will come in if i hit Control s or save this project notice that a bunch of things seem to happen if i refresh or undo things a lot of stuff goes away like these semicolons right so if i save it it all goes away. That's what the linter does. It, it, it just reformats your code to make it look really good. Another thing is if I get rid of that space and hit save, it's, well, it didn't come back, right? So it's not gonna do everything. It's not gonna necessarily format it to look perfect, but it will do it in the sense of like spacing. So like if I put render like this, I hit save, it brings it back to where it was. Um, so there are several things like that that are really cool with the standard library. And that's how we set up our React app. Now, of course, I mentioned npm run build and npm run start. One's a development one. The npm run start we're gonna do a lot of as we learn more about React. Um, a couple other things that you are probably gonna be interested in are npm install, right? So npm install we just did. So install, this will actually add it to our package.json as we see right here. So it gives me a, a dependency for this project is that library. So that's actually how you add that. And it does it automatically. It updates all these things automatically. It's really, really cool. Um, but you can also do npm upgrade. And what that will do is upgrade all of your packages inside of this project. Now, of course, if, if I were to give this to you, just the, let's say if I sent this to you, just the SRC code and the package.json, if that's all I sent to you, you could just run npm install and that will actually install all of the dependencies on your local system and download all those node modules that you might need as you see there's a ton of them in here so you're probably not going to want to put that stuff on github actually you're definitely not going to want to do that because that's just a lot of redundancy and that's why the git ignore already exists it's already in this project to make sure that you ignore the installed redundancies because you only or excuse me dependencies because they are super redundant and you don't actually need them on GitHub to make your project run. Okay, so super easy stuff. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Make sure you subscribe to our channel right here to get more free React tutorials, just like this one, but more of them are gonna be actually building stuff with React, not just setting it up. Thanks for watching.